Now, in addition to national governments, international intergovernmental organizations have also looked to the IRA working definition of anti-Semitism to aid them in tackling Jew hatred. We now welcome European Parliament Vice President Nicola Beer, who oversees the Special Envoy on Combating Religious Discrimination, including anti-Semitism. She also chairs the European Parliament's Working Group on Anti-Semitism. Vice President Beer, it's an honor to have you with us today. Dear honorable guests, dear ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to speak to you today. As a Vice President of the European Parliament and Special Envoy on Combating Religious Discrimination, it is among my highest priorities to fight any form of anti-Semitism, to foster Jewish life around Europe and to protect the deep-rooted Jewish culture, values and traditions on European soil. However, the past couple of years have seen a rise in anti-Semitic narratives and virulent attacks as well as disinformation campaigns. The COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the ongoing Russian invasion of the sovereign neighbor Ukraine, accelerated the spread and manifestation of anti-Semitism around the world. Online as well as offline, we observe a steady rise of religious-based hate, which is often paired with disturbing and worrying conspiracy theories against Jews. Each single anti-Semitic behavior puts European values such as the respect for democracy, the rule of law or human rights in danger. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance and its working definition of anti-Semitism are a vital instrument to protect the rights of Jews and actively fight hatred in the world. Anti-Semitism in every single form must be contained. The Adoptions and Endorsements Report 2022 is a beacon of hope for the Jewish community as well as for everyone who fights anti-Semitism. It is insightful to see that so many countries, most recently Finland, Colombia, the Philippines and Bosnia and Herzegovina, leading organizations and companies such as Lufthansa have adopted the working definition of anti-Semitism around the globe. Hopefully it is just the beginning. At the same time, the report is a steady reminder of what we still have left ahead of us for the future. We need to make sure that the working definition becomes the commonly used benchmark when we talk about anti-Semitic behavior. In order to achieve that, more governments and companies need to apply the definition which illustrate the different modern forms of anti-Semitic behaviors and educate their employees in recognizing and thus combating anti-Semitism. Only if we expand the circle of supporters can we hold the alarming recent developments against Jews. However, companies and states are not enough. People's to people's contacts are the key to strengthening, understanding and to jointly fighting anti-Semitism. Thus, we must continue to build bridges across all religions and foster intercultural exchange. The Abraham Accords are, for example, a significant step in order to develop mutual trust and interest in each other's religion and culture. We can already see its impact. This year, Egypt marked the Holocaust Remembrance Day for the second year in a row. Morocco reconstructs Jewish heritage that shows the historical and actual interconnectivity of the people and societies in the region. I want to encourage you to continue the fight against anti-Semitic behavior in order to build a world without anti-Semitism, discrimination, racism, and instead with dignity and respect for all religious beliefs which are all a part of our different societies. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for coming together and I wish you an insightful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Beer, for your participation today and all of your hard work combating anti-Semitism in the European Union.